The lack of human dignity experienced by Africans is the direct result of the policy of white supremacy. White supremacy implies black inferiority. Legislation designed to preserve white supremacy intends this notion. Menial tasks in South Africa are invariably performed by Africans. When anything has to be carried or cleaned, the white man will look around for an African to do it, whether he is employed by him or not. Because of this sort of attitude, whites tend to regard Africans as a separate breed. They do not look upon them as people with families of their own. They do not realize that we have emotions. We fall in love like white people do. That we want to be with our wives and children like white people want to be with theirs. That we want to earn money, enough money to support our families properly, to feed and clothe them, to send them to school. And what houseboy or garden boy or laborer can hope to do this? Pass laws which to the Africans are the most hated piece of legislation in South Africa, render any African liable to police surveillance at any time. I doubt whether there is a single African male in South Africa that has not at some stage had a brush with the police over his past. Hundreds and thousands of Africans are thrown into jail each year under pass laws. And even worse than this is the fact that the past laws keep husband and wife apart and leads to the breakdown of the family. Poverty and the breakdown of family life have secondary effects. Children wander about the streets of the townships because they have no schools to go to or they don't have money enough to enable them to go to school. Or no parents at home to see that they go to school because both parents, if there are two, have to work to keep the family alive. This leads to a breakdown in moral standards, to an alarming rise in illegitimacy, and to growing violence which erupts not only politically, but everywhere. Life in the townships is dangerous. There is not a day goes by without somebody being stabbed or assaulted and violence is carried out of the townships into the white living areas. People are afraid to walk alone in the streets after dark. Housebreakings and robberies are increasing despite the fact that the death sentence can now be imposed for such offenses. Death sentences cannot cure this festering sore. The only cure is to alter the conditions under which the Africans are forced to live and to meet their legitimate grievances. Africans want to be paid a living wage. Africans want to perform work which they are capable of doing and not work which the government says they have to do. We want to be allowed to live where we obtain work and not be forced out of an area because we were not born there. We want to be allowed and not obliged to live in rented houses, which we can never call our own. We want to be part of the general population and not confined to living in ghettos. African men want to have their wives and children live with them where they work and not forced into an unnatural existence in men's hostels. Our women want to be with their menfolk and not left permanently widowed in the reserves. We want to be allowed out after 11 o'clock at night and not be confined to our rooms like little children. We want to travel in our own country, seek work where we want to, and not where the Labour Bureau tells us to. We want a just share in the whole of South Africa. We want security and a stake in society. Above all, my lords, we want 
equal political rights. Because without them, our disabilities will remain permanent. I know this sounds revolutionary to the whites in this country, because the majority of voters will be Africans. And this makes the white men fear democracy. But this fear cannot be allowed to stand in the way of the only solution that will guarantee racial harmony and freedom for us all. It is not true that the enfranchisement of all will result in racial domination. Political division based on color is entirely artificial, and when it disappears, so will the domination of one color group over another. The ANC has spent half a century fighting against racialism. When it triumphs, as it certainly must, it will not change this policy. This, then, is what the ANC is fighting. Our struggle is a truly national one. It is a struggle of the African people, inspired by our own suffering and our own experience. It is a struggle for the right to live. During my lifetime, I have dedicated my life to this struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination. I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all peoples will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal for which I hope to live for and see prosper. But my Lord, if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die.